Blackout Com supports several different device types, including the Lilygo T Deck, T Deck Plus, and other types of T Decks. Some of them may, the T Deck Plus has an internal antenna, some of them may have external antennas. Uh, but basically, if, if it's a TDEC type device, it's going to have the same touchscreen, trackball, keyboard, and power on off switch, SD card reader, and a reset button. The TDEC Plus, it's really nice that it has an internal antenna that doesn't have quite as good of range as some of the ones with external, but, but it is nice to not have something that catches on your pocket. I get a battery life of anywhere from 18 to 24 hours. Uh, using it so you might get more or less depending on how often you have the screen on and things like that most of what you do is going to be when using blackout comms on the t-deck is going to be with the touch screen the trackball and the keyboard so anytime it's asleep you wake it up by swiping or clicking the trackball once it's awake um, you can get to the home screen by clicking that uh, you can you know swipe up and down and tap icons just like you would on your phone pretty much on the home screen or on the messages screen uh, the the green antenna there means it's got good connectivity right now the GPS icon there being green means I've got a live GPS signal if I want to see who's around I can touch the neighbors button and then I can see here's all the other devices in range right now there's signal strength um, what type of device they are and if I see a green eye GPS icon it means I've got a good live location if it's yellow it's a delayed location I can see the other devices location on a map by tapping that or I can send them a message by tapping the send button I will just go back to the home screen all of the blackout comms devices they work the best and do meshing the best when they're asleep. You can put this thing asleep anytime by tapping that lock button. You can wake it up by swiping the scroll trackball. If I want to send a message, there's several ways I can do it. Um, I can go into messages and click to send a message. I can reply to a message. Or I can go into the contacts. Let's go back to the contacts. I can go into the contacts and choose a device and I will choose the pager which is right next to here. I can also, as I'm looking at the contacts, I can see some information about them but I'm just going to send it a message. So I will just type a message uh, that's the day of the week which is Wednesday. Spelled wrong. So I can uh, choose how long the message should try to be delivered and some other things I can set the priority I'm just gonna send it like that and if it's in range which I mean it should be because it's right here the range can be anywhere from uh, several miles or more to uh, very small depending on what's in between you and the other device so I can feel that vibrating it means it's got the message so I wake that one up and I'll have a look here. So yeah, it's showing it's got a message. Wednesday spelled wrong. Yep. And the check mark means it was this device did confirm it. And I so I should be able to see that also here. Yep. Up means it was sent. Check mark means it was confirmed. Green means it was instant, not meshing. Uh, if I look at some of the older devices, I can probably find a blue one. Well, not on this one. So if, if these icons are blue instead of green, it means it went through meshing. I can touch that filter button. Now I'm only seeing messages between me and the pager. So there was one, there's one that I received through meshing. These are some older ones. Yeah, so I'm gonna clear that filter. Uh, I'm gonna go back to the home screen. So if I wanna see location, I can either click that that icon and it's going to show me a location of myself and uh, everybody else or that's kind of jumbled um, I can do things like clear everybody off and just add one like let's see if I want to see that one which is this device right here 
now I'm just seeing those two. It's going to tell me the heading relative to me um, and how far away. Last known, anyways, and maybe not live. If I want to, so that's the pixel map. If I want to see a QR code instead, I can touch the, this icon, and now I've got a QR code that I can scan. And, and then it will pull up a map on my phone. Settings, um, these are different things you can change about your device. Um, so it, I would not change anything in here unless you uh, read about the settings and know what you're doing. Um, otherwise you could, you could mess something up. Uh, the default settings are pretty good. So I, I would just leave them alone if I was you. Uh, commands, these are remote commands I can send to other devices. Uh, like I can have them tell me who, who else is in range. Um, some stuff related to meshing. Uh, I can update settings. By default, communicators, which would be any of these things, have remote commands disabled. So if I send this thing a command or the pager, it's going to ignore it. Uh, unless I explicitly enable that in the settings. The mesh links or nodes, they have commands enabled by default. So they will respond to commands that they get from anyone. And the, the root device can even uh, remotely wipe any device in the cluster. So if you needed to do that, the root device is able to do that. Now, as I was on the settings screen and the command screen, this thing was had meshing disabled. So it, it was ignoring the radio. So that's why the antenna went red there. You can see it's green again, because on the home screen it is doing meshing. If I put it to sleep, now it's that's all it's doing. So, yeah, so that's a pretty much an overview of the T-Deck with blackout columns.